Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to the channel. Big up to every single one of you that's locked in. Hit the like, subscribe on your way into the channel. As you guys already know, I just have to do the little housekeeping and all of that. But it's good to be back, especially in the form that Chelsea's in, because it's relatively peaceful nowadays. There's a lot less scaremongering. There's a lot less crying, moaning. People are starting to believe a little bit more. We're on a good run of victories. And it's the return of Carefree Reacts because you guys told me that you enjoyed the last episode where we crashed it on all those Manchester United fans crying and moaning about Jaden Sancho and their failed hate watches. So we had to uh, reel it back up again because I saw there was a new episode of The Overlap that dropped today. I saw Rory Jennings was on it as well. And also, I do want to say before I start off, no issues, no beef with Rory Jennings, but... I saw a lot of stuff in that video that I didn't like. So I thought, hey, let's react to it. Let's react to it. Because you guys told me you enjoy my reactions. You guys told me you enjoyed the last episode. So we're going to make it a little bit more of a frequent thing. Now, it's not going to be a weekly show. I'm just going to react when I feel like I need to react to something. So you're just going to see random carefree reacts episodes drop throughout the season. You won't even see it coming. Pro um, probably like this episode. but. Enough of the waffling, enough of the talking and all of that. You're not here to listen to that. You're here to listen to the overlap. So let's get into it, guys. Let's get into it. Where is the tab? Because I've got way too many tabs open already. Here we go. Here we go. Right. Um, cinema mode. That will do. Let's get into it. Right, Rory, let's get to Chelsea. I must say uh, they've surprised me a lot. I think especially in the away games. Like You know them type of results where you haven't watched the game and then someone tells you, like, Wolves away, and you go, wow. And then West Ham was pretty similar where you're thinking, well, you know, it feels like a really big result because I just didn't have you as anywhere near the top four at the start. Yeah, yeah, we knew that. We knew that. You spent all summer using every opportunity you had to waffle about us. Started the season, I thought you could really challenge for it, but it looks like now I think you just could yeah, I think I think. Whoa, 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 whoa! I need to go back before we even get to Rory. One sec. The game, and then someone tells you like Wolves away, and you go, "Wow!" And then West Ham was pretty similar. Where you're thinking, "What?" Well, you know, it's a, it feels like a really big result because I just didn't have you as anywhere near the top four at the start of the season. I thought you could really challenge for it, but it looks like now I think you just could. Yeah, I think I think you're on. So, so <laughs> game week five, you know. And and now the narratives change. Now suddenly everybody thinks we can make the top four. What happened to to stockpiling players unnecessarily? What 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 happened to um, Chelsea are not a young and exciting team? Because these are all Jamie Carragher's quotes. A lot has changed in the space of a month. This is brazy flip flopping. This this is sick. I said getting rid of Pochettino was a huge mistake. He has Chelsea finishing seven four below. He said, we are not a young and exciting team. I said, I don't know why any player would look at Chelsea and sign for them. Um, the only reason could be their agent saying we're getting a seven-year deal on big money, which is, again, yet another um, example of Jamie Carragher knowing absolutely nothing about this club and our plan because we have lowered our wage structure by about half what it was when Roman was here, if not even to a third. What else? Stop buying players and players need to stop joining them. Where is Jao Felix going to play? And now suddenly, suddenly the narrative has switched after five games that, oh, I could see Chelsea making the top four. I, I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. But whatever, let's keep it going. Stay on that side, Jamie, respectfully. But we'll keep it moving. It's, it's a very interesting experiment, almost, what's going on at Chelsea. Like, I wasn't particularly into Enzo Maresca. And now we've got to a stage where, aside from the opening day against Man City, where we got beat, we're unbeaten. And in principle, that sounds great. You mentioned the away games. You talk about that statement result at Molyneux. You look at the very good result of West Ham United. And again, you start thinking, is something going on? But as soon as you look slightly beneath the surface, so for example, the teams that we haven't lost to, they're all in the bottom eight. It's not quite, quite what it looks like, I don't think. You don't oh my goodness. So how, how is our Chelsea representative already downplaying what we're doing? Like, or whatever happened to supporting, at, at least early on? Because like, even when I was critical of Pochettino at the start of last season, I weren't Poch out immediately. I was critical, but I was waiting for him in the hope to turn things around. And like, obviously he didn't. But how are we doing table talk on our opposition in game week five? 
Like, how about we compare this to last season? Last season, um, we didn't win at Bournemouth. We protected the point. This season, we went out to attack Bournemouth throughout the 90 minutes and we won the game, even though we weren't good in the first half. West Ham United, we lost there last season. We haven't won there with fans since 2017. We got a win in comprehensive fashion this season. Wolves, we lost there last season. We won there in comprehensive fashion this season. A another bogey ground for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The home form does need to improve. Like I'll, I'll hear that one because like, we still haven't had a home league win yet. Although we've only played, I think, two home league games. And again, one against Manchester City. Why are we shooting down our form so soon? Why are we doing this? Especially from the Chelsea fan. Like, it would be annoying if it was the rival fans doing it, but I could also just dismiss it as rival fans. When it's our own people, it's crazy. It's crazy. I lost those games last season. That's, po that's possible. That's possible, but... Siri, what's the name of the guy? Oh, I had you know, take, take the money. Take the money. I don't care. <sighs> Another example to get YouTube premium. Ah, well. Ah, well. Hurry up. Hurry up. No. It doesn't it doesn't feel as good as it looks? I think we we we've got still think this 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 still wait, what it doesn't feel as good as it looks. I think we 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 still think this 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 still what the hell does that mean? It doesn't feel as good as it looks. I don't think you either lost those games last season. That's po that's possible. That's po shout out to Chloe, the Liverpool fan, because she's cooking. We didn't win any of those games last season. How are the rivals got more chess for our club than our own fans? Oh my goodness! It's possible, but it doesn't. It doesn't feel as good as it looks. I think we're, we're, we've we still think there's, there's, there's still. I, I genuinely don't understand that we've got back to back clean sheets for the first time in God knows when. Our attack is flowing. The defense looks a bit more solid. How does it not feel better than it? Ugh. Yeah, it's a little bit early to see. Yeah, so, so West Ham United, look, Chelsea and West Ham have a huge rivalry. It's a big result for us. We have a terrible record going over to that ground. They've lost three games at home for the first time in their history. Mm -hmm. And we're part of that. But I just I just wonder... If, if, if I even start on the records that Pochettino was breaking at Chelsea in a negative fashion, I'll be here all day in it or whatever. Quite how much of a statement I, I, th I think what the results have done is they've almost just calmed the off-the-field talk as much just because they just felt like Chelsea were a topical. Every time we was on TV, we were talking about Chelsea and it was more of the off-the-field stuff. And I think results just, just helped that massively. Into it. Oh, oh, ain't that, a, ain't that a little bit of shock for everybody? Results? Change the narrative of the club. Didn't know that, guys. Didn't know that. Ever wondered why that whole civil war talk was going around during the international break and as soon as the football came back, it died? Because, hey, it's all about what's happening on the pitch and when nothing's happening on the pitch, everyone's just going to do up scaremongering and everything like that. Like, people need to look at the switch up from the media on Chelsea in the space for a month. A month ago, we were a mess from top to bottom. All, all because we sacked the manager and we went straight back to stage one of the process. Like I keep telling you guys, stage one of the process looks pretty good so far, don't it, people? Don't it? But like the, the switch up on Chelsea needs to be studied. It genuinely needs to be studied. It's ridiculous. James is just calming everything down. I actually think Maresca spoke quite well. In the press conferences at times, uh, you know, he's had difficult situations, Raheem Sterling, early on the season. I think he explained something really well about how many players he had and who was going to play in each position and where he was going to do that. But Yeah, maybe you should have listened instead of waffling about where Jao Felix was going to change. But aye, we move. When you actually look at the squad's goals, you actually see the... There was a game, I don't know what it was. I watched Chelsea maybe a week or two ago. It was Bournemouth. Yeah. Yeah. And the they subs, played us off the, the park. Sub, yeah. and, they played us off the park. You, listen, you were lucky to win it, but that, that can happen. But oh, they played us off the park. They had one good half, man. Why are we always? It's always our guys downplaying our football. The thing that made me think the players you were bringing on sub, it was, yeah. Like, yeah. it was like they were like players who should be. Now, I don't know further down the line if that's going to be a problem because I think that quality of player on the bench can be a problem. But it was like Felix, come on, Nestle, come on. You Sanchez. think. Quality depth, right, Jamie Carragher? Hey, 
The, the same man who tried to mock our stockpiling, huh? Ha ha ha! You see how the narrative changes? This man literally said players have to stop signing for Chelsea and we need to stop buying players. And now he's praising our debt. Stay on that side, Jamie. Stay on that side. Yeah. And it was like, wow. They have got... When we did the first one, we were saying Maresca's going to be the first one gone. Mm. And, and like Jamie says, I think these results have almost calmed things down mm. uh, a bit for him. And there is a shock. Big shock! You look at the squad. There's a there's a lot of talent. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of. There's really a lot of players. Just yeah. a little bit worried about the centre forward. To be honest, but again, did he score two? Yeah, we yeah, scored yeah. four and four now. Fair enough. Like again, I'm not even going to shoot that down. We all wanted a striker in the summer. I'm not even going to shoot that one down from skulls. I do believe the strike force we have is enough to get top four. Oshimen, for example, was a move for the title in a year or two's time, but. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I don't even have any issue with that one. Yeah. Like, Nicholas Jackson really is finding form. He's I'm turned... worried about the keeper a little bit. I, I, I am. I don't think he's... I mean, that, that again, another fair point. Fair play. I think we've got seven keepers at the club and none of them are any good. But... <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, he couldn't help having a dig, could he? He couldn't help. But It's like you say about the fixtures. I think you won't be able to judge Chelsea until we get into yeah. November, yeah, December. All, then all, you'll get a better idea. When you look... When you look... Now, I hear that. You're going to have a much stronger idea of the club's capabilities by then, but you can get a little bit of an idea in game week five. By game week five last season, alarm bells were ringing in my head from the Aston Villa game, from the Nottingham Forest game, from the Bournemouth game. So you can get a little bit of an idea from this early. Look at the fixtures and the points that we've accrued and the, the, even the run that we're on. Aside from Man City, who, who beat us opening day at Stamford Bridge, they're all games that you would expect us to win against teams that are struggling. Now, City there is beat, something... There City is something beat you really well as well. Uh, Pardon? City beat you comfortably really well. Oh, yeah, well, we couldn't get a ball. You know, Kovacic yeah. driving through the heart of our midfield. It was, it was almost symbolic, wasn't it? Kovacic left. We spent all this money, a quarter of a billion quid on two midfielders. And it's Kovacic who drives through the heart of the midfield. <laughs> This guy really just enjoys dunking on us at every, uh, every available opportunity. Like, I, I don't get... We knew Kovacic wanted to leave. We knew Kovacic kind of needed to leave anyway because he was injury prone all the time and we couldn't really rely on him. Why are we dunking on our own midfielders to, to prop our ex-players? It's, uh, it's so weird. But I do think there's something in what Chloe said where those games last season would have been defeats. So perhaps... They, they literally weren't victories last season, but yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps. But what was the feeling with, with the Chelsea supporters in, in that sort of moving on from Pochettino? I know there's always that Tottenham mm. thing there in the back of your mind, but the way the season finished... I'm... Nobody cares that Pochettino was ex-Tottenham. There is genuinely like 50 reasons to dislike Pochettino and they have nothing to do with him being Spurs. Literally nothing. I don't think anybody cares that he was ex-Tottenham. Like, th there was much bigger issues. The defence, the game management... The set pieces, the waffling, throwing players under the bus to protect himself every week, waffling about inexperience to defend against inexperience in a cup final. But, see, I could keep going. I really could. But Mareski coming in as it still. I think. I think looking back, look, I was never. I was never a, a particular disciple of Mauricio Pochettino. He felt. And I don't remember too, your interview yeah. after the uh, the Carlin Carabao Cup final. Yeah, he <laughs> felt far too Tottenham for me, and it's. I don't think he should have ever been given the job. But the fact that he was given the job. He found a winning formula. Towards the end of last season, we went on a really good run. We played some beautiful football. We battered West Ham at home, battered Tottenham, battered Everton. And it was, it was good. The football was being played. Oh, all football. those games? He found a winning formula. Towards the end of last season, we went on a really good run. We played some beautiful football. We battered West Ham at home, battered Tottenham, battered Everton. And it was, it was good. The football was being played. It was really good. Yeah, and in between that, we also lost 5-0 to Arsenal at the Emirates. But, oh, oh, he inverted the fullback. He inverted the fullback. Yeah. Like, give him the job. Give him the job. And then they sacked him. And the reason they sacked him was principle. You know, Trevor Chalaber came into the team. He obviously was the best centre-half at the club. They insisted on getting rid of him. It was not night and day like that. Shout out to Trev. But, like, he wasn't head and shoulders clear of all of our centre-backs like that. I've said a lot over the last few months. Chalaber was very lucky to be injured for, through a lot of our bad form. Because if he was playing through that bad period for us in the first six months, I promise you, he would have been exposed like everybody else in that defensive system. Everybody was let out to dry. 
Chalaba came back at the perfect time for Trevor Chalaba because it looked better on him. Pochettino was a man of principle. He said, no, Conor Gallagher, he's gone off to Atletico Madrid to play for Simeone in the Champions League while we're in the Conference League with a championship manager in Maresca. It's... <laughs> See, like, again, our own fans are downplaying our own manager to protect the ex-manager who failed at our club. It's ridiculous. There are so many things to get on on just that one sentence alone. Number one, Gallagher playing for a UCL club does not make him a UCL-level player. If Eddie and Ketty are signed for PSG from Arsenal, that don't make him a PSG-level player or a UCL-level uh, player, for example. Gallagher, all the best luck to him at Atletico Madrid. But miss me with this crap like he was our best midfielder and everything. At Chelsea, he was a backwards passing merchant, a foul merchant. And yeah, chasing his first touch half the time and winning the ball just to lose it back. That's it. Our best midfielder was Kai Sado and the rest weren't good enough. Simple as. And also, again, talking down on our manager, like all this crap about being a, diff a championship manager and everything. Let me go back and find your quotes on Frank Lampard when he first signed for us. He didn't even win the championship. He lost the playoff final. But I'm sure everybody was sucking up to him when he took over our club. Patience for him, but no patience for Maresca, I guess. <laughs> it's uh, Pochettino went up massively in my estimation because... He was true to his principle, whereas Moresca's come in and effectively he's done everything that the board and the ownership of the club want him to do. Rory? Again, again, one thing. True to his principles. If I start, he's, th this is a man who said Chelsea isn't a club for patience and then asked for patience. Maurizio Pochettino, by the way. This is a man who threw his team, his team under the bus every single time we drop points. Blamed it on missed chances left, right and centre when we only had chance in a certain period of the game. All just to deflect from his awful tactical nous. The man who waffled about a lack of experience to defend against children. And then reverted back to his pre-season tactics. All because we were in our biggest injury crisis and 2-0 down away at Aston Villa. So he had to just do something. And then Maresca just doing what the owners want. Yeah, winning games and playing possession-based football well, which is what the owners wanted. Like, what is this waffle? It's genuinely ridiculous. Cheer up. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, no, I, I agree. That's coming from you. Yeah, shout out to the Evertonian. Man, tell him, cheer up, bruv. Like, what are you moaning about, genuinely? It'd be worse. <laughs> 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 yeah. Wow. Wow, that was an absolute waste of time. That was an absolute waste of time. Guys, let me know your thoughts on that garbage because all I saw was Waffle and crying about Pochettino and, and just disregarding what the club's trying to do as a Chelsea fan. And it's mind-numbing that it's done by our own fans. It's genuinely mind-numbing that it's not even the rivals anymore. It, it's our own fans who are trying to talk down on the club while we're actually in a good run of form too. It's genuinely insane. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like I said, I don't have any beef with Roy Jennings, but like, there's a lot that he said in that video that I just don't agree with. I don't get this constant glorification of the Pochettino era. We want to talk about Gallagher being in the Champions League and us being in the Conference League. Who put us in the Conference League? Who put us in the Conference League? I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Yeah, the same manager that you man are trying to prop on there. Have some shame. But here's the end of another episode of Carefree Reacts. Big up to every single one of you. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Hit the likes, subscribe, all of that. And we'll be back for the next episode. Take care, everybody, and up the